Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Oh my God, we're back. I need to move towards you. We are alive. We're all here. The guys are trying to see themselves on the camera. Welcome to episode 106 <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. of Table Reads. Hi, guys. Hey. That's Jeff over there. My name's Jeff. That's Josh over there. My name's Josh. Josh. My name's Josh. <laughs> I'm Josh. And I'm Bobcat Do- Goldway. <laughs> I was raised by a cup of coffee. <laughs> you sound like Homsar. That's exactly a whoa. Hey. Homsar. Nice. All right. <laughs> oh, shit. I didn't even get it. And Sean has left us <laughs> one good reference away from quitting this show. <laughs> well, yeah, I really, I really I appreciate just it. I unplugged my headphones accidentally in my excitement. Before you send them to me. What's that reference? Homestar Runner? From Homestar Runner. There's Homsar, which is like, I don't know what he's, he's like. He's like a tripped is. out fucking crazy <laughs> version of. He's like the, the Down Syndrome version of Homestar. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. How progressive. <laughs> <laughs> I check my email. You don't know Homestar Dude, Runner? I do not. Holy I do not. shit. Wow, he didn't have the internet in Alabama. Well, I saw them oh, live. Those guys are from Atlanta, and they did a live show here with Limousine. That's cool. And they had puppets of 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 Homestar and Holy Strong shit. Bad. It was what it was awesome. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, Dude, sounds this awesome. is this is like early two thousands internet fucking gold. Pre YouTube, yeah. You never heard oh. of Trogdor the Burninator? I've heard the meme. Like, <laughs> <yelling at Trogdor. laughs> I know that meme. Know That's from. all from Homestar yeah, Runner. I, was say, I don't know where it come from. Homestar10.net. It's dot com. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Homestar10.net. It's dot com. <laughs> Y'all are taking some trips back, and I love it. I love watching this. <laughs> all right. So, welcome to the Homestar Podcast. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> Episode one. Oh yeah, so so those guys, the brothers chaps that made Homestar, like they went on. Uh, one of them worked very heavily on uh, um, Gravity Falls, huh? A show that I super I super show. love. It's great. He went getting about the Homestar podcast. Oh my god. Um. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I wasn't prepared. He was, I was like, I was like, oh, that was a good bit, and he was like, well, if you didn't know, well, no, no, I just, I, 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 I got, I nerded out. I, I you oh, shouldn't have done home, Homestar. It's, sorry, Homestars. I was a big fan. Me too. We'll talk about this later. (laughs) For now. Previously on Table Reads. So when we last left off, Sean forgot to write the previously on before uh, between episodes as we were recording. Drinking So um, we finished the first book. We got through Fellowship of the Ring. We started into the Two Towers. Frodo and Sam set off on their own toward Mordor, which apparently is like right by where they were. Right over the hill. Orcs took Merry and Pippin. Left the pipe. Uh, Sam, or uh, Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas chased after them, met up with Aomir. Everything's pretty much lining up with how things are supposed to be at this point. Okay. Um... And where where we left off, uh, Gollum did show up. Got to got to rewind a bit and go there. Gollum showed up. I had to be very phlegmy. It was pretty good. No, you did fantastic. Fuck the rest of the script. I was just <laughs> thanks. There's a takeaway. That's, a, that's, that was a, that's good. an A plus Gollum. Absolutely. Gollum's coming up like as soon as we come back in too. So, um, but where we left off specifically, Aragorn and the writers of Rohan also known as Roharim, uh, and... Where do they say that? You made that up. Is uh, that a Homestar reference? (laughs) (laughs) It's from the books, man. I read the books. It's in the books. This is a movie. This is the biz. And shield shield maidens will be coming up also. Not real. Not a real thing. Shield maidens of Rohan. 
There were more shield maidens of Rohan in the Peter Jackson movie than advertised, by the way, because a lot of the men of Rohan were women in fake beards. Little behind the scenes factoid for y'all. Hey, were any of them in the ghost army? No. Boo. They were not Rohirrim. Boo. So, uh, <laughs> Aragorn and Gimli and Legolas seem, when we left off, to be pretty content with knowing that Merry and Pippin have run off into some dark woods and they're just going to take off with the Rohirrim toward Minas Tirith uh, to defend Minas Tirith and Rohan. Fade in. I just want to say I apologize for messing with the previously on. I forgot you were still in it. Normally, we don't, <laughs> normally we don't like shoot the shit while you're doing that. Normally, I, like, oh, I have a script to read. Sure. This time, I had nothing to read because my wife came home between episodes, and I was talking to her, and stuff was happening, and I needed to get more eggnog because eggnog keeps a golem throat healthy. Because we stopped talking, and I stopped, and I heard the jazz, and I looked at Josh, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> we were still in the recap. <laughs> He's going to hurt me after. I fucked it up. Don't let him hurt me. He just yanks my mic. <laughs> That's you. You got to listen You're now. You're done, Jeff Lewis, striking you from the I intro. can shut you up anytime I want. <laughs> See? <laughs> my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> she wishes. That's true. Exterior, marshes. Sundown. The last words we read were, the sun is low, and now it's sundown. I love that. <laughs> Previously on Sundown. Through the mists and vapors of the marsh shines the dark red globe of the setting sun. Frodo awakes. He shakes Sam, who sits up with a start. They look at each other in alarm. Gollum is not in sight. Sam looks terribly guilty. He is sworn on the precious. On the precious. There's a double S in parentheses in the dialogue. Four reasons unknown. <laughs> precious. This is the part where Frodo starts speaking parcel tongue. He's going to open the Chamber of Secrets. Oh my god. This is the crossover. They're we climbing. <laughs> Thanks not going to lie. Calling my emails. Not going to lie. When I was watching Fellowship of the Ring... And Gandalf and uh, Saruman are having their, their wand fight or their, their yeah. staff fight. Yeah. I was thinking, so did over time wizards perfect this technology and shrink it down into the wands that Harry Potter has? Because their staffs <laughs> seem to, to act in the same way that the wands do. Ollivander's just like, I can make that shit smaller. But it's big now. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's like an old cell phone? Is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. A brick from your. Yeah. Like a, Gandalf boom. is basically Zach Morris or. Uh, Time out. Gecko. I want. No, I want to see Ollivander do like an Apple Expo, like a release of the smaller one. The <laughs> tiniest. It's like a yeah. toothpick. Yeah, but, oh, it, but it with, comes with, out like a turtleneck. <laughs> like with like the video with the Johnny Ive yeah, narration. So he's moving around. He's like. He shows a staff. He's like, wizardry, witchcraft, <laughs> magic. <laughs> it's just small. We've perfected wand technology with this. new Nautilus shell inlay. <laughs> it's a sphere. It's Ollivander didn't make that one. That one was made in America. That's Queenie's wand. Whatever. That is going deep, man. He's, he's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? This Harry? is where are you, Kelly? Kelly, like, Kelly would be on board with this whole conversation, and I, you guys are looking at me like I, I'm doing theoretical math equations in front of you. I need a soundboard just with one button, crickets. <laughs> it's like it's like a it's like a mil, it's like a million borders just screamed out, <laughs> and then silence. I used to have crickets on here. I don't. Oh. That was for me though. I've gotten better. Cricket. <laughs> That's what crickets say. They said they're like Pokemon. <laughs> cricket, 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 cricket. <laughs> Animal! Oh, oh, Gollum's getting ready. The eggnog's oh. coming. Here we go, <laughs> baby. Let's that, just name all the things that say their own name. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Aragorn. Uh, Snoop Dogg. 
S and double O P D O double G. He's got a lot of mileage out of that name spelling thing. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Every rapper, they'll just say their name spelling. when they don't have anything else going on. Like, oh, there aren't any words in this point. Hold on, hold on. Turn up the mic. Let me say my name real quick. Mike Jones gave his phone number. That's Mike true. Jones. <laughs> Wow, we're like going back in time. We have not talked to any about Lord of the Rings. We <laughs> started this. Sam is startled when he hears Frodo repeating on the precious with extra S's. Oh, so that was those those parentheticals. <laughs> that was He was no, doing wait. It. He spell was, spe- Okay, oh, so for the for the audience, spell S's. S S. E E S S E S S he is sworn on the precious. On the precious. <laughs> Sam is startled when he hears Frodo repeating on the precious with extra S's. <laughs> Frodo furtively checks the ring beneath his tunic. Hissing sounds of Gollum approaching. Sam nudges Frodo. Gollum, he's here. Frodo looks up without too much surprise. Soiled with black mud. Dripping with slime, Gollum walks up to Frodo and Sam. Sup, dog? He is happily chewing worms and slavering. Are we rested? Ready to go on? <coughs> they look in disgust at the worms hanging from his mouth. He was famished. Poor thing, him. Exterior marshes, night. Frodo walks on in Gollum's footsteps, and Sam follows behind. Gollum weaves through an endless network of dark, stagnant pools and soft mires. Occasionally, through a misty fog, a pale moon shines. Gollum shades his eyes. Frodo glances up from time to time, as though aware of some threatening presence. Gollum looks at Frodo, reading his thoughts, sharing his anxiety. Nice mists, nice thick mists. I can't catch us, can't hurt us. Frodo feels slightly relieved. Out of necessity, Sam and Frodo have taken to limiting Gollum's, imitating Gollum's half walk, half crawl. Then Sam and Frodo notice pale wisps of light dancing over the bogs. Gollum, what are all these lights? Frodo stares, entranced. The lights are everywhere. Hundreds of flickering flames. The tricksy lights! Candles of the dead! Yes, yes! Mr. Frodo, don't look at them! Gollum doesn't look at them! Sam trips and falls. The ground gurgles (laughs) and flickers with light. That's for those of you wearing headphones while you listen to this. You're welcome. I'm, uh, that's me. <laughs> Sam lifts his face out of the bog mud and sees just beneath the muddy waters, rotting cadavers, shimmering with luminescent fumes. Sam rises, shaking. These are dead things. Dead faces in the water. Frodo is fascinated. Of elves, of men, of orcs. I see no hobbits. Sam, do not fear. All that you see is dead and gone but from memory. Yes, yes, all dead, all rotten. There was a great battle long ago, yes, when I was young, before Precious came our way. Men and elves fought the orcs. The three continue their uneasy track. I have heard these old tales. Elves and men overcame the armies of Sauron, but he came back, and the tale still runs on. We're in it now, us hobbits. Think of that, Sam. Sam seems relieved, if not happy. Us? And is Gollum in our story, too? Hey, Gollum. What would you like to be in this story? The hero or the villain? (coughs) We had a... A, a real name once. What would I like to be? We was the one who found the precious. We was. And the precious was with us once. 
We have always we had a name, and we lived by the Great River, and we burrowed under trees. We loved witches. We was of hobbit kind. Of hobbit kind. Sam and Frodo burst out laughing. Sam does an imitation of Gollum's way of walking. Three little golems in a row we shall be. Sam and Frodo laugh heartily. They get careless, taking false steps and sinking into the bog. Sam pulls Frodo out of a soft patch of mire. Never was there laughter in this fell land. We also will laugh, Sam. Sam and Frodo look at him expectantly. Gollum, after a moment, emits a soft but terrifying giggle. Sam and Frodo exchange glances of trepidation. I gotta try this giggle. <laughs> success. That was a success. I feel trepidation. <laughs> Thanks. That was a trep a terrified giggle. Exterior, forest, night. Terror stricken, Merry and Pippin stumble over each other as they weave an erratic path through the forest. No. Path, weave, path. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> Suddenly, they see <clears throat> that they are heading toward, straight for a towering figure, cloaked and hooded, who is slowly opening his arms. They grind to a stop and fall in a heap. Kicking up a flurry of leaves, they spin around and rush off frantically in the opposite direction. They scamper through the forest, only to crash into an apparently identical figure. His cloak is flung open, and from it issues a glow of white light. The tall figure stands above the two paralyzed and trembling hobbits, his hands gripping their shoulders. The face which looks down upon the hobbits is that of Gandalf, except that the eyes are white instead of gray, and his expression is intense and pained. It's Saruman! The figures begin to walk in a, to talk in a deep voice, as if each word had to be forced out painfully. Can we be Saruman? It's not Saruman, it's Gandalf. Oh, it's Gandalf. <laughs> yes, I am Saruman, but as Saruman should have been. Tell me of yourselves. Merry and Pippin are trembling with fear, but Pippin summons up the dregs of his courage. Merry, it's Saruman, the bad wizard. <laughs> yes, that's it. Try and get his sword. Now Pippin addresses the figure, play-acting flamboyantly. There we were, and orcs were closing in all around us. Come on, Mary, give us a hand. Mary imitates growling orcs. The figure strains to listen, and his pained expression reveals an inner struggle, as if attempting to break through from a difficult plane of consciousness. Exterior, marshes, night. Frodo and Sam are fast asleep. Their bodies are sinking steadily into the quicksand like mire. Gollum leans over Frodo. His right hand stretches out to Frodo's head, while his left hand is poised above Frodo's chest where the ring lies. Gollum pats Frodo on the head softly. His right hand runs through Frodo's hair. Nice habits. Sleepy heads. So tired. The right hand clenches Frodo's hair. Should we save them? Should we pull them out, my precious? Right hand hesitates and then lets go of the hair. It remains poised above the head. Left hand begins to pry open Frodo's vest to reach the ring. Precious was ours! Is ours! Always is ours! <laughs> right hand swings it left, knocking it away. Hobbit is the man! We swore on the precious! Right hand grasps Frodo by the hair again. Exterior, forest, night. And we were prisoners of this great orc who held us by the hair. 
Illustrating this, Mary grunts and growls and rips out of the ground two great tufts of grass. He struts up and down, working up the nerve to throw them at the figure. Pippin glances at Mary and shakes his head. He... he had a great sword! A sword! He nudges Mary to take the figure's sword. Suddenly, he was attacked by men on horses! And the great orc! Pippin points to Mary, who demonstrates how the orc was slain. Exterior, marsh, dawn. We got a lot you guys want to take a nap? Very <laughs> quickly here. It's just, yeah, it's just all, it's all Sean talking, narration, and characters. The first light of dawn appears. Gollum stands above Frodo and Sam, who continue to sink further into the mire. Right hand flies at Frodo's head. Words whistle through Gollum's teeth. His breathing is jerky, as if two persons inside were breathing at different rhythms. Master, wake up! Please! Left hand grabs right hand, and the two hands grapple with each other. Left hand flies free <gasps> to grab the ring. Our oh, precious for us! <laughs> but right hand stops it. The two hands clasp and claw at each other. Exterior forest, dawn. Pippin is ham acting. And a great battle all around us. And we just walked away. And whirling his hands above his head. Above us. Men, horses, orcs, swords. And we walked away beneath it all we did. Pippin walks jauntily away. Mary is puzzled and believes this is the signal to make a bolt for it. Mary, let's show Great, Sar great Saruman. Loan us your sword. Pippin strides up to the figure, demanding the sword. The figure looks down, seeming to nod. Pippin, with great daring, extracts the sword from its sheath. The figure does not react. Pippin retreats, sword in hand, terrified, and hands it to Mary. But Mary, you do it. Get a piggyback. Mary climbs on Pippin's back, who nearly collapses under his weight. But he keeps up his nervous tirade. And the great orcs were above us, wielding their orc swords. And we just walked away. Mary grunts and groans and wields the sword most awkwardly. Pippin howls and they charge the figure. For the Shire! But the weight of the sword pulls Mary backwards and the two of them crash to the ground. The figure explodes into laughter. On his face comes the beaming smile of Gandalf as his arms fly open in a grand gesture, as if suddenly life courses through his body again. Exterior, marshes, day. As though responding, hold on. Okay, sorry. As though responding to Gandalf's gesture, Frodo stirs in his sleep. His eyelids quiver. Gollum leans over him, his whole body and face contorted in a spasm, his hands in a deadlock. One of his feet swings up, kicking himself in the stomach. Gollum doubles in pain, and left hand flies free, immediately to be caught by right hand. This whole Gollum fighting himself scene looks dumb. I can see however they shoot it, and remember, there's no CGI Gollum. This is a dude in makeup. Oh man, it would have been played by Jim Carrey. In 1970? Yep. Sure, stick with that. Giving it his best. Very young. <laughs> 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 Tom Selleck. Left hand was rapey. <laughs> Left hand was rapey. He's rapey. He's the one going for the thing. He's like moving his tunic back. The right one's like brushing the hair. I guess they're both rapey. <laughs> I've come full circle. Back to rape. Gollum's just rapey. Yes, yeah, yeah. Good to know. <clears throat> Exterior forest, day. Gandalf, recovering from a hearty laugh, is kneeling down over the two hobbits, who look, look up in amazement and disbelief. Oh, hobbits! All wizards should have a hobbit or two in their care. Gandalf, who walks, who talks, and lives in riddles. Mary spits on his fingers and twirls one of Gandalf's bushy eyebrows. That's the Gandalf I remember. Gandalf rises and stretches and lets out a great cry that is part, jo part of joy, part pain. Exterior, marshes, dawn. Gollum is contorted in a p 
paroxysm of conflicting parts. On one, f one foot kicks the other off the ground, and Gollum plunges into the mire with a great splash. Master! Frodo awakens and frantically struggles to escape from the mire. His hand clings to a rotting rock, and he begins to pull himself out. Sam! Sam! Sam awakens with a start, the mire already bubbling about his lips. He grasps Frodo's hand, and he scrambles out. Frodo thrusts out his hand to Gollum, who reaches out to grab it, but his other hand prevents him. Amid hisses and a confusion of half-formed words, Gollum, the prey, to, the prey to paroxysms, sinks swiftly into the mire. Gollum, you swore on the precious to take us to Mordor. Gollum's face, twisted in agony, is almost engulfed. We can't win. Sam grasps Frodo and points behind him. Frodo turns, and above him, just a few feet away, the Great Wall of Mordor rises out of the marshes. Gollum has sunk beneath the mire. And that's it for Gollum. That's a wrap on Gollum, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if he died in the books and they just stretched him out in the movies. No. Exterior, forest, <laughs> slash, Thanks, middle earth model, slash, aerial shots. Hey, Day. drones, baby. Helicopter. I want to point out this middle earth model that they're referencing is from the opening scene of the movie when we saw J.R.R. Tolkien in the movie. It's been a long journey, Sean. I don't remember. <laughs> yes. I only remember because I was listening to the podcast today. Oh, okay. Word, word, word. You make me think I'm crazy. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. And literally, as we were reading it, I'm like, already? Holy shit. <laughs> we're back. And in my head, as I was listening to it, I went, already? Holy shit. <laughs> Gandalf stands majestically with his eyes and arms upraised to the sky. The hobbits are next to him, watching. Beyond an opening in the trees, high in the sky, catching the sun, a hawk endlessly circles. Gandalf's outstretched arms follow the hawk's flight. Although concentrating, Gandalf talks warmly to the hobbits. I was Gandalf, but for hobbits, I will always be Gandalf. I can see many things far off, but things that are close at hand, I cannot see. They got glasses uh, for that, I'm right? I'm sighted <laughs> <laughs> I need bifocals. Yeah. My eyes are white, you see. <laughs> <laughs> While before it was Gandalf's arms which trailed behind the circling of the hawk, now it is the hawk which follows the slow, regular circling of Gandalf's arms. Oh shit, he's conjuring it. He's like... Riddles! That's the power of wizards! The hawk descends on a winding spiral and alights on Gandalf's arm. He grasps the hawk's head firmly and stares deep into its eye. He sees, fragmented and scrambled, the sights that the hawk's eye has taken in, whilst soaring above Middle-earth. The pressure of Gandalf's hand regulates the flow and speed of the images. We gotta squeeze more memories out of the bird. <laughs> what have you seen, bird? Let me just juice this hawk's brain real quick. Yeah, all the visions. <laughs> Gotta get them out. <laughs> wow, he had a lot of visions of blood. Um, <laughs> well, this one ain't talking very good at all. Oh, man, it just shit. <laughs> oh, boo, boo, bad bird. Bad. Put that back in your cloaca. <laughs> <laughs> First, he sees three horsemen galloping at great speed. They are Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. There rides mighty Aragorn, and elf, and elf and dwarf ride at his side. Where is Frodo? Does Aragorn bear the ring? If I have doubts, the enemy will share my doubts. This I know because I have become more like the Dark Lord. Of Dark Lord, hobbits! Your Gandalf is dangerous. He gets carried away. In the hawk's eye, a view of what it saw whilst drive, diving for a kill. It plunges toward a fleeing rat, and blood spurts as the claws sink in. More dangerous than anything you will ever meet, unless you are brought alive. 
before Sauron himself. He's like flexing on him. He's like, I'm the baddest motherfucker, except that guy. Also, strangely hungry for rat right now. <laughs> <laughs> then, on the great panorama of the marshes, he sees two little figures asleep, whom he makes out to be Sam and Frodo. Ah! Sam, Sam and Frodo, Frodo live? live? Alive, but beyond all reach. As if the hawk were avoiding Mordor, its view sweeps away from the marshes, but not before Gandalf glimpses the dark, gloomy pall of smoke tumbling across the sky from Mount Doom. Then Gandalf sees the Nazgul. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. You're on page 11 yeah, yeah. From the wraith essence of the Nine, a Nazgul has risen. It rides unchecked the plains of Rohan. What's with old King Theoden? Has he slipped beneath the shadow of the shadow? I'm really sorry, guys. I forgot to turn on the the video. the script on the video. Oh, okay. But everybody knows how to get a hold of Josh for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's been on there the whole that's time. Free yeah. publicity. Listen, guys, I've just been sitting here pointing at it. Well, they were listening. <laughs> How you really know? They were listening to Sean putting on a one-man show for a long time. They're yeah. Like, All right, we got the visuals covered. What's with this Joshua Baker? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> Josh's inbox is just full of dick pics. Yeah, so, <laughs> perfect. More than normal. <laughs> Send me some dick pics. Speaking of which, you really should finish Watchmen. Moving on. Yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> that was shocking. That I, made me feel bad about myself. I, I don't know. Well, he's God, so it's whatever. <laughs> Dr. Manhattan's Blue Dong. Yeah, it's very... The, like It's the focal point of certain <laughs> shots, and that was what made me uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable with Dick. At all, like uh, movies, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but just when you're like, okay, and they, they're following the the little trail or whatever, you know, and it like goes up further than you think because you're like, no way, no way, and it's just boom, dick, and I'm like, oh, you cowboys of cinema, you. <laughs> uh, just frame the whole shot around the dick. <laughs> I wish his talking pieces was just his dick, like, and it's them having oh, a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> he's just zoomed over his dick. He's like, I shouldn't be here. Why not? Like, all the dialogue's happening up here. Here's an <laughs> egg. No, no. Here's here's an egg. Yeah, here's, a, here's an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. <clears throat> the Watchmen podcast. I'll do that. There are, there are a lot of those. I bet. But we could be the um, you read the whole Wraith Essence bullshit? Uh, yeah, what's uh, the happened to the king? He, he slipped beneath the shadow of the shadow. Gandalf sees a beautiful white horse crossing the plain. He speaks with the tempo of the galloping horse. Shadow facts! Shadow facts! Answer my call! Faster! Faster! You will carry us all and bear our hopes too. Gather aid. <laughs> I like that was a Pete poem. It was... Shadow facts. Shadow facts. Answer my call. You will carry us all. That rhymes. Good. Good so yeah. far. And bear our hopes to. Oh, shit. Gather, gather aid. <laughs> <laughs> the fast gallop of a horse is heard approaching. The hawk startles and takes to the air. The great white horse, Shadow facts, gallops up to them. Gandalf leaps up onto its back, snatches the hobbits up behind him, and speeds away through the forest. Exterior. Marshes beneath the Great Wall of Mordor. Day. <clears throat> Sam and Frodo slowly edge along the Great Wall, searching for a way in. Behind them are the marshes that they have just crossed. The sun like a yellow stain, shines through the great rolling pall of cloud and smoke, which congests the sky. A cruel glare bounces off the marshes. The two hobbits look up. The immense wall above them seems to sway and swerve against the churning pall. He loves the word pall. Yeah, yeah no. It, it, if I ever meet 
John Borman, I'm going to say, hey, is your favorite word Paul? Because I bet it is. I read your script. I was appalled. Oh. oh. He won't remember. He has dementia. <laughs> oh, fuck you. That's better than his script. <laughs> Especially this next racist bullshit from Frodo. So hold on, real quick. Uh, I actually did that. I met Brandon Sanderson at Dragon Con this year. Okay. He was like just packing up and getting ready to go, so I only had a minute. So I'm like, question, is your favorite word carapace? Because I bet it is. And he's like, that's a good guess, but no, it isn't. Because Brandon Sanderson is a liar. His favorite word is for sure carapace. And anyone that has read the Stormlight Archives will back me up on this. Yeah, both of you. Indeed. Where is Kelly? Kelly has read all of them. <laughs> I need you Kelly the, here. You're so, the producer. I'm you like, get her here. Uh, yeah, I'm like, are we the audience or <laughs> is, is our audience the audience? <laughs> <laughs> He's got levels. Who is he talking He's to right now? He's got levels right now. <laughs> Does Kelly listen to this? <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> That's what I, <laughs> What's a carapace? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Maybe it's carpaccio. Carpaccio. <laughs> with a little, say that with the music. Say that with the, the music. Make it a, with extra Italian. Look, we got listeners that are Stormlight Archive fans. I'm sure of it. Especially if they're listening to us, our Lord yeah, of the Rings okay, read. Okay, yeah. All There's right. crossover there. That's true. There's two of them. R- ring it out like a hawk. <laughs> Go! <laughs> Craving a rat right now. <laughs> ring it out like a hawk, brain. There's so many Book of Mormon references. <laughs> it's a little Middle Earth trick. <laughs> Put it in the box and crush it! <laughs> ringing out memories from the hawk. That's just so bizarre. Oh, it's kind of a cool there's idea, a, there's though. There's a birthday in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> what was her number? It must have seen where I put my keys. <laughs> her was it, bird? <laughs> This is a good movie. <laughs> we just made a movie better than this movie. <laughs> it's superpower is he has to wring the truth out of people. Right, 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 like, like, just birds. Like just birds. Like it's an actual like viscous. Yeah, yeah, Catch that yeah, pigeon. Yeah, yeah and he has to eat it. Yeah, he's like, he has oh. to like suck it. Oh like, yeah, it's like the, the the Harry Potter thing with the well. Or does it? But he's got to like drink it and the, shit. Like, uh, the, uh, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> eye zombie is what you're saying. I don't know. I don't watch Canadian TV. <laughs> <laughs> the zombies apparently have to like eat people's brains to get their memories and shit. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I don't watch it either. <laughs> that's that's my understanding of it. Except from on not Sundays. watching. He just wiki- <laughs> Wikipedia everything. He's like, got it. Next. <laughs> my wife watched it. Oh, okay. Word. Um, I don't know where we are, man. Do the racist. You're Frodo at the racist thing. part that Frodo. <laughs> Oh. Right after oh. the Great Wall. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Sam and Frodo slowly edge along the Great Wall, searching oh no. for a way in. Oh, no. Trump's done such a great job on this. I don't think we'll be able to make it, well, Sam. Great, great Wall and Frodo's first Oh, line yeah, Jesus. Yeah, that's terrible. I saw a YouTube video on how to scale it. <sighs> Behind them are the marshes they have just crossed. The sun, like a yellow stain, shines through the great rolling pall of cloud and smoke which congests the sky. That's right, Paul got me. The immense <laughs> wall above them seems to sway and swerve against the churning Paul. Sorry to repeat myself. Frodo shields his eyes. Sweat rolls down his face. Ah, yellow face. Poor Gollum. He reminded me of the weather in the Shire. Now rain, now sun, now wind, now frost. It's over a whole year. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> All these seasons. He's, he's just described a year. Sam is having a go at being cheerful. Master, there isn't a hole in this wall, not even for a hobbit. They edge on, the marshes forcing them to press close against the wall. There is something of Gollum in Frodo's posture. The chain weighs on Frodo's neck and has rubbed it raw. Frodo lifts the chain for relief. I must rest a while. It's heavy on me, Sam. Lad, very heavy. Sam lad? That's weird. Sam points ahead. A withered oak tree is growing out of the base of the wall. Look, where there's life, there's hope. That's a John Lennon quote. 
I, I have a sound bite of John Lennon going, where there's life, there's hope. Nerd. <laughs> no, that sounds pretty cool. Why is it that on your board? You know, didn't think I was going to need it for this <laughs> script. <laughs> it's the right time period. Should have rang out the hog. <laughs> Ha, <sighs> um. Exterior, branches of the oak tree. Day. Sam and Frodo were lying in the boughs of the tree, exhausted. Sam offers Frodo a piece of lembus. Have a bite, Mr. Frodo, and then a bit of sleep. How can we sleep under a sky like that? Is it night or day? The great slow rolling pall of clouds and smoke casts a deepening gloom over the marshes. Sam sniffs back a tear and takes Frodo's head in his lap. Let's say it's time for a midday nap. Sam begins to sing and cradle Frodo, his own eyelids drooping. When summer lies upon the world and in the noon of gold, beneath the roof of sleeping leaves the dreams of trees unfold. He hums on. The shriveled leaves of the tree flutter and quiver. I hope this tree is a good tree, in a bad place, if that's possible. He gives the tree a friendly slap and begins to chant as he falls off into sleep. Good tree. Eat earth, dig deep, drink water, go to sleep. Eat earth, dig deep, drink water, go to sleep. He has fallen asleep, but the chant continues, echoing through his head. Sam nods off, and his song goes on too. The two songs intermingle, the sound of horses' hooves is heard, and the songs fall into the pattern of percussive hoof sounds. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bowser, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. You've been listening to the Looney Tunes Critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput. Which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to Table Reads. So, Jeff peeked ahead a little bit. He tells me there's a lot of narration Good coming up. Air. Good block of narration coming up. Oh, man, I forgot where it was. Perfect. <laughs> <clears throat> so, let me just get some of this water here. What do you guys think in this episode, huh? I fucking I, I like it. I mean, it's better than some of the stuff <laughs> we start. At least shit's happening. I had a really good apple wild. earlier. You had a really good what? Apple. Oh, good, good. Yeah, and some peanuts. <laughs> While I was reading forever. While yeah, you yeah. were talking to yourself, <laughs> he was I had eating. A, I had a snack. You know, I'm rested. Well, while they were resting, I don't know I, why I Pippin was, was the only person talking in that scene. That was just ridiculous. I was Gandalf. <laughs> you were Ghost Gandalf, and still am. But now I'm whiter. Now I'm white, Gandalf. At least you're not yellow. OxyClean! I can see what's happening in front of me, but not far away. <laughs> uh, opposite. I can see far away, oh. but y'all could be stains for all I know. <laughs> y'all stay out of my way. I'm looking over there. That's my favorite. Fade in. Exterior. Gatehouse and courtyard of Theoden's castle. Day. That's right, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Along a path. I did well, and then I cast doubt on my skills. No, you were doing good. <laughs> Along a path lined with oak trees, Gandalf, his white cloak billowing. Gallops Shadowfax up to the gatehouse. No, up to gatehouse. No article. Soldiers of Rohan come, come forward to challenge him, but he sweeps them aside and rides in across the courtyard. 
As the wind whips up his cloak, Mary and Pippin are glimpsed, hanging on behind him. Real quick, uh, which one of you guys wants to be Worm Tongue? What does he do? He Worm Tongues in the ear of Theoden. He's, He's uh, goes, Brad Dorith. I mean, I could just do that. Like, uh, ting. I'll do that. Do you All know right. who Brad Dorith is? Is, mm-hmm. it, is he the hunchback? He's the guy that was um, Chucky, and he was oh. um, the doctor on Deadwood. Oh. Oh, okay. I know who you're talking about. Deadwood. That guy. Uh, he had a big, wispy mustache. Yeah, yeah, mustache. and the glasses. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, King. We should fuck him up. That's a that's a that's his Chucky that he does later on in the series. <laughs> uh, Brad Dorif is great, and so is his daughter. Um, she was in Dirk Gently Solicit Detective Agency. Have you guys not seen this? Where do you like find time to watch all this shit? Like, <laughs> Dirk Gently has okay. It has. Um, this guy, uh, Sean McBee, <laughs> Sean McBee, <laughs> this show, Frodo, created. uh, Frodo, fucking Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood. Wood. Thank you. Thank you. Elijah Wood. And so many great people. And it's just the greatest show. It's uh, based on books by Douglas Adams. Oh my God. I'm Hitch doing hiker. It's probably that same art author. Yeah. Yes. But this is Dirk Gently. So it's a detective agency. It's about a detective, uh, who, does his cases based on the interconnectedness of all things. And that's Elijah Wood? or that's... He's his assistant. Oh, okay. I don't know the name of the actor that plays mm. um, Dirk, but uh, it's only two seasons. It got canceled. It was on BBC America, and it's the greatest show ever made. It actually greatest sounds pretty made. fucking rad. It's <sighs> fucking amazing. Mm. It also has, uh, are you a Battlestar Galactica fan? Oh, I love Battlestar. You remember the chief? Yeah. He's in it oh. in season one. In fact, that's what I knew him from first, uh, Aaron Douglas. Yeah. So I would see him in shit. And um, when Jessica and I watched Battlestar, I was like, oh, my God, Jessica, look, that, that's the guy from Dirk Gently. And she's like, what? No. The other way around. <laughs> yeah, because like, now he's all fat and he's got a beard and you're like, Rrr. He kind of talks like the guy from the Red Letter Media videos. Mr. Like Plinkett. Yeah. Oh, I think I got to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, some, some pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. I just want you to watch it. <laughs> you want some coffee? No, I just want water. Okay. Yeah, coffee. So let's stop talking about things that we really wish we were experiencing instead of the script. I it's a, it's be, like a completely different podcast. Just I want to be, hunch- like, <laughs> be hunchback as Mr. Plinkett. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You may not have noticed, but your brain sure did. Um, is Hunchback Worm Tongue? Is what you're saying? Is that I don't know what you guys are talking about, Hunchback. It says Hunchback. Yeah, it says Hunchback. Maybe. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, King Theoden is is all hunched over and old. No way they call him Hunchback, does it? I, like, I don't know. I don't see anybody being called Hunchback yet because I don't read ahead, you dicks. Well, because you're having to read. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um. No, he's named Worm Tongue. Is it? Oh no, it it is Worm Tongue. Hunchback is a thin okay. Do you want to be Hunchback or Worm Tongue? I mean, you just said they're the same. I'm fucking with you. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Interior passage day. Gandalf drives his horse down it. Men at arms block his way, but they flinch and turn away at the blinding power of horse and rider. At the end of the passage stands two guards before a door. They fall aside, struck with fear. Shadowfax rears up and hammers his hooves against the door. It bursts open and Gandalf rides into the throne room of King Theoden. Interior, Theoden's throne room, day. A large hall decorated with a high-beamed roof, supported by carved wooden pillars, decorated with skulls of horses. It has a rough-hewn air of a tough, Spartan people. Tapestries drape the walls, telling of a martial, telling of the martial deeds of the riders of Rohan. But superimposed on the masculine, rugged structure, are more sophisticated decorations. Delicate drapes hang down from the beams and wind around the columns, obstructing the openings to the air and light. 
The hall is in dimness. The court lounges in posts prandial content as musicians play lutes and lyres, and a girl in wispy veils performs a graceful dance. King Theoden sits upon an austere throne of wood, carved to the shape of a horse, the seal of which has been softened the seat of which has been softened with cushions. He is wizened with a pale, wise face and heavy lidded eyes. His counselor, a thin, nervous hunchback, sits at his feet and to one side stands his daughter, Eowyn, serving wine to her father. She is a beautiful maiden with intense, taut features. The women of the court are finely and provocatively dressed as the men wear elaborate doublets and cod pieces. Cod pieces. Sexy. Stewards move among them with pitchers of wine. Gandalf's violent entrance disrupts this pleasant scene. The courtiers spring up angrily. Only the king remains seated. The hunchback moves with surprising alacrity towards the door, crying out in a falsetto voice. Guards! Guards! Who permits this foul intrusion? The guards come clattering in Gandalf's wake. Hail Theodon, king of Rohan! I, Gandalf the White. Come to warn you of a mort- God damn it. Come to warn you of a mortal danger that will soon engulf your pretty vanities. I come to rouse you from your feather cushions and put pads put saddles paddles. in their place. I, I said paddles. <laughs> Josh, like you're so slip. tickled. Freudian slip. I come to rouse you from your feather cushions and put saddles in their place. Gandalf climbs down from Shadowfax, and Merry and Pippin scramble, scramble down after him and hide in the skirts of his cloak. The old king rises painfully from his seat, leaning heavily on a staff made from a horse's thigh. These guys are really into thighs. They're into horses, into thighs. <laughs> his frame, now racked with age, was clearly once tall and proud. You want me to run it? You want Why to don't me? you be Theoden? I'm well, all, he's going to be Hunchback. I'm Hunchback. You can be both. I can be both. I mean, I can do old Theoden. Right. Troubles I'm ever follow up. you. I just feel like your Theoden is going to sound exactly like your <laughs> Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was with. I was over here like drawing like a rat. Like, <laughs> Troubles ever follow you like crows, Master Gandalf. There is no welcome for you here. Like the hunchback screams out at the guards. Seize this base offender to the king's peace. Throw the storm crow to the dogs. Gandalf ignores the hunchback. He addresses Theoden. King Theoden, I bring you aid. Aid? Do you bring men? Horses? Are these your warriors? The hunchback darts forward and pulls Merry and Pippin from under Gandalf's cloak. What the fuck? <laughs> Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Christmas My pass. camouflage didn't work! Yeah. I had hobbits! <laughs> uh, the courtiers laugh at the cowering hobbits, but Gandalf swings his staff and it crackles ominously. The hunchback drops the hobbits and scampers back to the king. Keep your forked tongue behind your teeth, worm tongue. I have not passed through fire and death to to bandy crooked words with one more who secretly serves the Dark Lord of Mordor. Shock greets this accusation. Wormtongue, the hunchback, appeals to the king. Lies and slander! Stormcrow. Oh, wrong guy. You got it, you got it? yeah? Stormcrow, you are a pick of bones in a carrion fowl that grows fat on war. He points to Wormtongue. He has counseled me to, and kept me. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he has counseled me and kept these lands in peace through troubled times. Can one worm have eaten out the heart of a great people? I spill on your guards. I set my halflings against your paltry soldiers. Gandalf kicks Merry and Pippin forward. Stirred by his words, they draw their swords and face up to the perplexed soldiers. Before the doubtful prowess of the hobbits can be tested, 
Gandalf springs forward and tears down one of the tall drapes that hangs against the wall from the high roof. Daylight bursts in, throwing Gandalf into blinding silhouettes. Are these the weapons of the Riders of Rohan, silks and satins? He swirls the cloth about his head. It twirls and coils in the air, forming strange shapes. The courtiers watch, mesmerized. Will you hear the truth or turn away my tale before it strikes your ears? Cheap wizard tricks! Dwimmer craft! My lord, expel him before you are bewitched! Eowyn leans over and speaks softly to her father, but not without sarcasm. Father, hear what he has to say. Words cannot harm a warrior king. Theoden does not respond to his daughter, or to the hunchback's plea. He remains impassive, allowing events to take their course. Gandalf has become trance-like. He begins to speak softly. In Moria I fell, caught in the coils of the Balrog. At the mention of his name, a gasp breaks out from the court. <gasps> Deep into the abyss, beyond light and knowledge we fell. His fire was about me, and I was burned. But his fire was quenched by a cold that was the tide of death. And now, he was a thing of slime, stronger than a strangling snake. We fought under the living earth where time is not counted. Far below the deepest delvings of the dwarves, the world is gnawed by nameless things. Even Sauron knows them not. Darkness took me. I strayed out of thought and time. I was broken. Naked on the hard horn of the world. Long lay I so. Then came faint to my ears the gathered rumors of all lands. The springing and the dying. The singing and the weeping. And the oh goodness, slow everlasting groan of overburdened stone. Then came a vision of the agony of Middle-earth. My heart was open to all the hurts of the world. The evil of Sauron pressed upon me, crushing me. The life that was lived in me, in all my forms, ebbed away. But a silly voice called me back. A hobbit voice. Hello. And I... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there he is. And I... <laughs> A stating character, that's great. <laughs> and I had a dream of halflings. They were so afraid, yet braver than many kings. They were foolish, yet wiser than many wizards. They lived in despair, yet they found hope. Their spirits drew me back from the everlasting night. His voice now rises and grows. He thunders out. Now in this world, there still remains a short time of doubt. Now we must risk all for one last battle against the evil that would overwhelm us. And you, Theodon, lord of these great lands, shall turn the scales. Ride out once more, old man. Listen to the hooves that sorely beat in your great heart. The court is transfixed by Gandalf's words. Only now do the courtiers dare breathe. The young burst out with wild cheers. Theoden rises to his feet, a smile breaking across his face, dispelling the wrinkles of age. All wars seem urgent to the young. I do not see this one is as special as you claim, but I should ride again. In the hall, there is great commotion. Eowyn falls to her knees and holds the king's robe. She speaks strong and clear. Were I, Eowyn, a warrior and not a king's daughter, I would have leapt into my saddle while he still spoke. While still he spoke. Meanwhile, Wormtongue throws himself at Theoden, dagger in hand. Merry and Pippin trip him up and turn him over. Wormtongue lies on his hunchback, trapped like an upturned beetle. Gesticulating and kicking, he shrieks out. Too late, feeble king! They turtled him. Theoden draws his sword. He grows in power with every moment, shedding his years as a horse throws off its winter coat in spring. To Minas Tirith! To Minas Tirith! The court responds with frantic enthusiasm. 
In the surging of excitement, Theoden thrusts his sword spinning through the air. Exterior, the plains. Day. The sword descends and Theoden catches it again. He is on horseback, galloping at the head of the riders of Rohan, armed and armored, helms flowing, favors flying. His eyes shine with the pleasure of the gallop. Gandalf, on Shadowfax, rides at the king's side. From under Gandalf's cloak, Pippin's face appears. He looks about him with a wide-eyed wonder. Mary! Mary's face appears from under the cloak of a rider at Gandalf's left. Amazing! This is good enough to go into Bilbo's book! Theoden raises an arm as a signal. The riders draw up their steaming horses and the company comes to a halt. Here is the parting of the ways. My captain shall divide together many men and horses. I shall seek the love of my son, Eomer. I too will go on my ways, on Shadowfax. We meet in Minas Tirith. Then, with great cries of Minas Tirith, they set out again, galloping on their several ways. Fade out. So there's some more Rohan stuff coming up, but I figure we've gone long enough. Absolutely. Oh, wait. we're like right there, right at one hour. Hey. Bam. Yay. Yay. So this is getting not terrible. That's true. I kind of miss it now. Like it lost its charm. Now it's just like the normal shit. It's like a normal. Yeah. yeah it yeah. will get there. I assure you. I hope so. Because like. I know we were bashing it, but at least it was, like, unique. Like, yeah, well, I mean, look, that musical number, the blood makeout, the beating a language into Gimli, like, none of that shit is written by someone who can keep up the normalcy of the rest of this script. Maybe they maybe they just, like, skim through the second book, <laughs> and, like, the third book, they're like, ah, uh, we're back at it! <laughs> Let's do some weird shit again. Maybe some of this was, like, weird enough for him. And it's, does, it's not weird to us because we already, like, accept it. Right, right. Like, this man is old, and words made him young. Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go find the wrong. love of my son. What now? <laughs> yeah. Then they were really trying to, like, sell toys and shit. Like, that's why Gandalf keeps calling his horse by name, this not is, to his horse. This is before George Lucas invented movie marketing, basically. Oh, okay, like, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because like, he just keeps naming his horse not near his horse. He's never like, come here, Shadowfax. He's like, I'm going to get on my horse, Shadowfax. <laughs> I think when they were gluing all the pages to the wall, he maybe just saw the word Shadowfax a lot, and he was like, that must be important. That's pretty important. He's going to say it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> also, I read that line as like, I too will go my own way on Shadowfax. Like, Shadowfax is a horse of Rohan. So he's like, I will go on Shadow Facts. I want you to know I'm taking Shadow Facts. Don't call me a thief. This shit is mine now, though. If anyone's looking for Shadow Facts, he's with me. I'm taking this tablet. He's with, with me, me. The yeah. guy who is writing Shadow Facts. <laughs> Away. Have you seen Shadow Facts? Oh, he's between my thighs. No way you could have, unless you were with me, which is where Shadow Facts is. God damn it. <laughs> if and you need to send him <laughs> a message, just send a Shadow Facts. Send a regular fax and I'll <laughs> give it to him. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. how you stretch a, uh, That's how you make a 200 word essay. You stretch <laughs> <laughs> Lots of shadow facts is how. Josh, I know that people spent the first 20 minutes of this show staring at your email address, but why don't you give it to everybody anyway? Yeah. Me at joshuajbaker.com. I do videography and I also do voiceover work, so call me. He does do voiceover work. Did you hear his awesome worm tongue? Etc. Oh, I'm really terrible at remembering between the episodes. So like like I have to like do the voice, play it back to myself, and then I'll like listen to it. So like we decide ahead of time. That's great. But like this particular reading when we're doing scripts like this, it's like fuck I don't remember. 
<laughs> like, but say, uh, Ian McKellen's the only one that I've gotten. Like, yeah, yeah, you're you're that. Like, that I know him. You got I'm that like, one yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so like, I'm like so that's why I try to tell you, like, remind, remind you who the actors were in case you want right. to do an impersonation of that actor that yeah. you can remember. Yeah, you'd have to like if there's direction, you guys don't feel direct me. I need the direction. Well, like, John, and, I can't remember. Y'all that both shit. got on to me, so I stopped asking questions. Y'all, y'all looked at me for Boromir. I'm like. Oh, that was me? Like, yeah, I was like, was that the dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> like, look, shit. look, my old co-host would literally do a voice, and then by the time we get to the next page, he'd be like, I didn't do that character, you did that character. Oh, no. And I was like, no, that was you. I was like, oh, really? Shit, how did I do that voice? <laughs> and I would have to tell him, like, you did Granny from the Tweety cartoons. Okay. And then he would do it different. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad we're here, too. We try so much. Hey, guys. Um, did you know that we have a Patreon now? And you can watch us record live as we do it, which also gives you, like, at least a month ahead of listening to these episodes because I don't even know when this posts, but we are recording it on December 17th. It'll be... It's more than a month out. Valentine's Day. Pretty much. Um, so, yeah. Go sign up to Patreon. Early episodes, ad free episodes. You get to see the thing. Everything is great. We love you. And you should give us money for that. Yeah. I guess. I mean, right? That makes sense. No, I'm. The, y'all owe us. <laughs> also, um, if you don't want to watch it live, you can watch it on YouTube at youtube.tablereadspodcast.com. That'll take you straight to our channel with all our videos where we record ourselves in studio. You can see Jeff being awesome. That's me. You can see this guy being awesome. That's him. And you can see sort of my my back. Yeah, Sean's back. And you can watch me push buttons. I push buttons real good. Lightning! Hey! Um, so yeah. Uh tune in next week when we will be on part 37 of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And until then. We will miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black.